Hello everyone, I hope all of the lecturers have a good day. So, our group is going to present about Thalidomide, um, which is the final group project on question 1. So, um, in this uh, video, we are going to talk about RNS structure of thalidomides, the function of RNS thalidomides, determining the RNS structure, thalidomide mechanism in causing birth defect, the benefits of R thalidomide, and children of thalidomide. So, what is this thalidomide? It is a drug that is introduced in Germany in 19. 57 SEA sedative and hypnotic. It is also marketed over the country largely as a drug for treating morning sickness in pregnant women. In the next few years, about 10,000 infants worldwide were born with focomelia or limb malformation. Only half of the affected infants survived and this caused many countries to tighten the drug approval regulations. This drug can cause severe life-threatening birth defects or the death of an infant if the mother of or the father is taking this medicine at the time of conception or even during pregnancy. Um, every dose of thalidomide can cause major birth defects in the baby's limbs, um, which includes arms, legs, bones, ear, eyes, face, and even the heart. So what the structure of thalidomide, um, we have two mirror image forms. And thalidomide is a racemic mixture of RNS enantiomers. The R enantiomers have sedative effects, while the S isomer is teratogenic. Under um, biological con conditions, the isomers interconvert, um, which is in all R isomers, it also has S isomers. So um, by separating the isomers before use is not effective. So this, this this is the R structure of thalidomide and the S structure of thalidomide, which is which is teratogenic. Alright, since we have discussed that there is two structure of thalidomide, now we are going to discuss on how to determine the two structure of thalidomide, which is the R and S structure of the thalidomide. In order to identify whether it is the R or S structure, we are going to need to use the Kahn Ingold Redox system, where the first thing that we need to do is identify the carbon that is attached to four different atoms or groups, and that is named and usually known as the chiral carbon. Now, let's say that we have identified the chiral carbon of the compound. The next thing we do is we must number the ligands according to their atomic number where the atom or groups with the highest atomic number will be the most priority one and the atoms or groups with the lowest atomic number will be the least priority one. So after that, what we need to do is draw an arrow from the most priority ligand to the least priority ligand. From our example here, we can see that 4 is in the way of 1 to 2. So what we could do is that we must neglect the existence of 4 there and just draw an arrow from the most priority ligand to the least priority ligand we have here, where here we have from bromine to the methane. From our last example, we have drew an arrow from the most priority ligand to the least priority ligand. And when we identify the arrow, it shows that the arrow goes clockwise direction. And that means the configuration, the absolute configuration of the compound is R. And on the other side, if the direction of the arrow goes counterclockwise, the absolute configuration of the compound is S. Here we have another example that shows the S configuration of a compound, where when we number the ligands according to their priorities and we draw an arrow and identify the direction of it, so we get to know that it goes counterclockwise, so it means that the compound have S absolute configuration. So there are several important reminders here when we use the Kahn in code method in identifying the structure of the compound. But the first one, all the chirality centers in enantiomers are inverted, where every R is S and every S is R in the enantiomer. And that is why it is actually hard to separate the R structure of a compound and S structure of the same compound. And other important reminder is that the lowest priority ligand must point away from the viewer. Now let's say we have a case where the lowest priority ligand 
are not pointing away from the viewer. So the first thing that we must do is that we must do the same from what we did just now, where we draw an arrow from the most priority ligand to the least priority ligand. And when we get the result of the arrow, let's say here, we have the result of, an, of the arrow, it goes counterclockwise. We must change the result of it to the opposite of it, where it is the R structure. And let's say, let's say at first, we have it goes counterclockwise, where it means that it is an absolute configuration of S. So since we have the least priority ligand pointing towards S, what we must do is change the result of the arrow to the opposite result, where it should have the absolute configuration of R. We go to the next slide. How teledomite produce birth defect? So, teledomite can react as a the degradation agent. Teledomite promotes the degradation of a bright range of a transcription factors. A transcription factors may be cell proteins that switch on and off. One of the transcription factor is SALL4. So from the picture, you can see how teledomites work. When there are no teledomites, SALL4 can detach from the cell and go to the transcription process and that will produce normal birth. But when we have a teledomite in the cell, the SALL4 will attach to the teledomite and prevent it from detach from the cell and go to the transcription factors. So the SALL4 will be degraded and not going to the transcription process because the absence of SALL4 in the transcription factors that will disturb fertile growth, especially limb development. So there are several benefits of R teledomite. One, uh, one, one of the most benefit is morning sickness, anxiety, tension, trouble sleeping. All of these four trouble can be treated for from the R teledomite. Our teledomite can also act as a sedative. Sedative drugs are helpful for treating anxiety and sleep problem. However, it can lead to dependence or addiction. Sedative are a category of drugs that slow brain activity. It is also known as tranquilizer or depressant. Sedative have a calming effect and can also induce sleep. It acts by increasing the activity of the brain chemical gamma aminobutyric acid. Now, let's look at the effect of the astelidomite. The most well-known tragedy of thalidomide is known as the children of thalidomide. As discussed earlier, the absence of SALL4 protein will disrupt fetal growth, especially in limb formation. As a result, individuals with deformed limbs are born. This is an example of a children of thalidomide. More accurately, this condition is known as phocomelia, a limb entropy. It is the most common malformation linked to thalidomide. The characteristic of individuals suffering of phocomelia is as such short upper or and lower limbs, hand or feet directly attached to the trunk, facial problem which includes irregular number of teeth and spacing, small jaw, cleft palates and or cleft lips, as well as small nose. Due to this devastating effect of thalidomide, thalidomide has been strictly contraindicated to pregnant women or women and women who are at risk of pregnancy. This is to prevent the conditions in which the children will be disabled. So, in conclusion, thalidomide consists of two stereoisomers, which are the R thalidomide and the S thalidomide. Based on what we have explained, the R teledomide is the effective stereoisomer of teledomide that acts as sedative drugs, while the S teledomide can cause birth defects on babies, such as phocomelia.